And let's give the Lord Jesus a wonderful round of applause. Lately, I've been talking about a very important, very important subject about the avenger of blood who existed in the beginning of the nation of Israel. He took revenge on the person who had killed another, uh, especially when it was a first-degree murder, when the person had the intention of killing. And then there was, uh, God had created some cities of refuge where the person who had killed someone unintentionally, as today a running over may happen, or something that wasn't supposed to happen, but the person died. But it is, but it is murder. It is manslaughter. It goes to trial. Back then, it did as well. But if if the avenger took the person before they get in the city of refuge, this person would then be killed. Obviously, after they got in the city of refuge as well, they had to do an assembly, a council of judgment, in which it was sort of a jury, in which they made the defense, the proof, and they were condemned, and then they'd go. But it, if it were manslaughter. The person who had taken refuge there, they couldn't be taken by the avenger. He couldn't get in there and do it, under punishment of him having to answer intentionally for that very murder. Then things would turn against him. And this here was very important because the person sometimes unintentionally was used, it happened, and then they would take refuge there. The council of elders of, of the judgment would set, would set them free, but they could not leave that city anymore until the high priest had then died. Only then they could go back home and to their possessions. And we can certainly apply that today when a person sins, not intentionally, not wanting to, but they sin unintentionally. And they go before God and they confess it and they're forgiven. Because Psalm 46 says, and now you'll understand, that God is our refuge. He is our, um, our strength and a very present help in trouble. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We are going to see good things here today. Now a person who has received a blessing. And I have been drawing your attention to this because many times I learned, although I've been there at the time the miracle happened and I've been used by God afterwards, paying attention, there's always a lesson for us. And maybe he'll give us a lesson today. Roll the first VT, will you? I got here with a problem in both knees and a problem of birth side is in both my arms and my back was hurting as well. How high could you raise your arms before the prayer without pain? I couldn't raise my arms. Just this high? They hurt a lot. How about now? Now I can raise them up here. And your knees. <laughs> my knees as well. See what you can do here. How did you walk with this problem? I was walking like this, Pastor. I couldn't then go Then walk up normally the now. You are free. <laughs> oh, glory to God. <laughs> and let's applaud Jesus, eh, folks? There is always a good lesson when God gives us his word. And today, God is going to give us his word and we'll be blessed. In a little while, I'll have a word to give you. But before I give you this word, let's see. Let's see another person in one, in one of our services, shall we? I've been doing a treatment for my knee, both my knees. Sometimes I have to spend the day in bed because it hurts so much I couldn't and walk. And to walk, how was it? Well, I had to walk dragging my Do leg. it like you did before. Like this, very like slowly. This. Walk normally now. Now I'm normal. Go on, go on, go on. <laughs> She's healed. And let's applaud Jesus. There we go. My brethren, let's open up the Bible now to the book of Amos in chapter number five. There is a word here which I'd like to give to you. I'm sure it will be a blessing. My friends, Amos 5.14 says, Seek good and not evil, that you may live. So the Lord God of hosts will be with you as you have spoken. So let's see two good informations here. Who doesn't want to live? Who would want to be dragging themselves along through life in any sense, physically, financially, or morally? But for this to happen, you have to seek out good and not evil. Or we are seeking out good or we are seeking out evil. What is good? It's the favor of God, which comes and enables us so that we can fulfill the divine will. And in this way, we can win all of our battles. Now, 
when we are not seeking out good. We are not neutral, no. You know, we are seeking evil. Because if we don't seek out good, and we know that good is in the hands of God, who will help us to be healed and also to deliver other people from any suffering, we are seeking evil. And evil will encompass us to the point that over time, we don't even want good anymore. I'm happy the way I live, dragging myself along suffering. This is not God's plan for us. So we have to seek good and not evil. What for? That we may live. So the Lord God of hosts will be with you as you have spoken. No, God is with us. He is since you seek out good and seeking out good that you may live. If you are seeking out good and you are not living, maybe you've been seeking out your personal interests. To seek good is to know what do you, Lord, want from me? What do you, Lord, want for my life? What can I do for you, Lord? When we are seeking out this good and we are receiving the information and taking on this information, then we are living. Then we are really, really free from all evil. He says here, Amos says, so the Lord God will be with you. If God is with us, we are living we have been successful. If we have been stumbling, if we haven't been making progress, the Lord truly is not with us at all. Although the social information from friends and all God is with you, God will do his work in your life. But hold on, am I seeking good? Am I living? Then you're not. If I am living, I will live. Let me bless with you, bless you in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for this word for the information here and help us, O oh God, to seek out good so that we may live to be successful and then we will fulfill your will. I bless everyone who's been praying with me and I order all evil to come out now in the name of Jesus and amen. My beloved ones, today I'll try and finish a subject which I've started to talk about a few days ago about Zechariah chapter 7, verse number 2. And it was very important for us. Zechariah is one book before the last in the Old Testament. To find it really easily, open up Matthew and go backwards about 10 pages and you'll find Zechariah or maybe less. Here in Zechariah 7, number 2, it all started here. Look, the people of Bethel had sent Sherezir and Rejimelech together with their men to entreat the Lord. Then Zechariah, the prophet, started to pray to God, and it seems God was very anxious to give um, some teachings to his people. This people had been 70 years in captivity. They were going to be set free. And the Lord started to speak back in chapter 7, but now I'm in chapter 8 here, where he says many, many important things. And one of them, he says it right here. Verse number 19. Thus says the Lord of hosts. He talked like this many times. The fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth, the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth month shall be for the house of Judah joy and gladness and cheerful feasts. Therefore, love, truth, and peace. The fast, back in chapter number 7, he complains in verse number 5, Ask all the people of the land and the priests, When you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh months, for the past 70 years, was it really for me that you fasted? Really for me? I mean, was it for me or was it for you? It was for them. There are people who fast a lot, but they're missing the aim of the fast. The fast is not to make God give us a blessing because he gives us, but it is an opportunity that we create when we break our flesh so that he can teach to us what we should do. Here he is saying to the people of Judah, going back now to chapter 8, verse number 19, that fast would be for them many things, joy and gladness and cheerful feasts, But they would have to love, to love truth and peace. Verse 20 now. Thus says the Lord of hosts. 
Peoples shall yet come, inhabitants of many cities. The inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us continue to go and pray before the Lord, and seek and, and seek the Lord of hosts. I myself will go also. So what is God saying right here? He is saying that the right fast is to seek his favor. They had fasted for 70 years, but they didn't understand it. They could have had the favor of God. But now, when they send to get his favor, you were missing the target. What is the target for? For you to be able to find the favor of the Lord. The inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us continue to go and pray before the Lord and seek the Lord of hosts. I myself will also go, says the prophet. So this is the target. The Apostle Paul said that we, as the Church of Christ, as families who serve out God, should improve a lot our relationship with God. Because if we are really filled with the Holy Spirit, there will be services when we will be here ministering the word praying to God and people who are unbelievers will come in here who have never believed in God. But when they see the presence of God so real in the midst of us, they'll fall flat on their faces and they'll confess God is in the midst of this people. The same thing in your household, the same thing in your whole family. It's necessary for us to restore the family services. We gather the family to celebrate a birthday. Sometimes we say a prayer thanking God for that life. But our celebration shouldn't be like those of the lost ones. Food and beverage. We should have the food, the food of God and the beverage of God, so that he may be glorified. Otherwise, we'll be missing the target. And it is possible. A while back, I was in the head office at the church in Rio, and the singer Anderson Frere was there, who is my partner in songwriting. He has written songs with me. And we were listening to some praises to God there. And it was so nice that one of the secretaries that took care of, uh, of the grass of music, now she's only preaching, she's in writ Andrea Rasha. And she came in, and when she came in, she is very tanned, but she went pale white, and she even tripped. I said, give me your hand, my little sister, let's pray. And the three of us, Anderson, she and I were praying, and we felt so much the presence of God. And the person recognizes what is going on in that atmosphere. But sometimes we don't pray, the couple don't pray, the children don't pray, there are some things that are disturbing them, and the devil is having a field day. We have to go back to the origins here. We'll go back to verses 19 and 20 again. In, the, in, the, um, in verses 19, 20, and 21. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth month, the fifth of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth shall be for the house of Judah. What? For his people, joy and gladness and cheerful feasts. Therefore, love, truth, and peace. Thus says the Lord of hosts, peoples shall yet come, inhabitants of many cities. The inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us continue to go and pray before the Lord and seek the Lord of hosts. I myself will go also. This is what is missing in here today. Yes, many peoples and strong nations shall come to seek in Jerusalem, which doesn't mean that the capital of Israel, you know, it might be anywhere where God is operating. The Lord of hosts and to pray before the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts. In those days, ten men from the, every language of the nations shall grasp the sleeve of a Jewish man. I mean, back then it was a Jewish man. Today is a Christian, the people of God, saying, Let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. And it's good when this happens. My brother, the problems are solved. People will be healed. They will be delivered. People will leave behind the most awful sins of all. All sin is awful, but some of them are worse even to our eyes, to our ears, to our ears. And let's seek out this truthful God who misses being with all of us. Everything he said in chapter 7 and 8, it was because from over there in Bethel, 
The people of Bethel had sent Sherezir and Regime Melech together with their men to entreat the Lord. God wanted to open his mouth and talk. Certainly, when you start to seek out God, he has a lot of things to teach you. You will understand the word and you will say, but God, how come these things were all written here? I read them and didn't understand. How did I lose so many blessings for not recognizing that you wanted to operate in me, through me, in my family? Oh, my brother, there has never been a more important time for all of humankind than this that we're living. Because the word has been opened, we have been known God and God has been operating. Let me pray here with you now. Father, thank you very much for such beautiful words, O oh God, which you have spoken here through Zacharias. You've spoken through Amos. God, you have spoken through Paul. We have a refuge who is Jesus, and we don't have to serve the demon who has overpowered us. One or two cases, the person has been swayed by the enemy. But God, we just have to confess to get delivered from the sin because the refuge, the city of refuge, it is real. When the avenger of blood ran against it, those who had been used unintentionally in a homicide and they get to the city of refuge, the avenger could not get in. He could not get his hand on him anymore. Father, the city of refuge for us is Jesus. It's you, Lord, because you are our refuge and strength, a very present help during times of trouble. My God, help us grow in, the, in, in your grace. This person who's praying with me, who has an office, who has a company, oh my God, may they feel to minister a thanksgiving service a worshiping service. And when, O oh God, your presence comes down, O oh beloved Father, it will be very different in the name of Jesus. God, lives will change. Employees will fall flat on their faces saying, or the employers, God is with this people. People will come from all over the place. Take me to your church because I truly need it. God, Help us to reach this level in which we, through us, using us, will do your blessed work. I bless all of these people in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to say a prayer now for everyone who has a respiratory problem. Not to sweat as I do. I have asthma. I have bronchitis, wheezing. My breath is way too short. Sometimes I do have the need to breathe and it seems that there's not enough air. And this is very bad. You can be breathless one of these days. I want to ask God for you. I will also pray for those who have any pain because I feel there are some people here with a headache, especially on the right side, and they do need deliverance. If you, if you have a respiratory problem, stand up because I'll pray for you now. And you, asthma, anything that you have, and you who have any sort of pain there, especially this headache that I mentioned here, and moral pain as well, that sadness, that distress, Dr. Swati's lack of fulfillment. It is a tremendous discouragement. I don't have the strength to pray or to open the Bible every day. I'm stuck in my life. God is speaking to you now. Bow your head and close your eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I present you all these people who are here who came after your blessing, your deliverance, the answer to their problems. And I believe, Father, that you'll give victory to these people. Come with your power now to heal, to deliver, to transform, oh my God, to do the work as it should be done. I join my faith with this person's faith now. I rebuke all of this evil force. I forbid this evil to continue, respiratory evil, come out right now. The headache on the right side or on the other side, come out any sort of pain in the body or in the soul. All evil is undone, all evil is destroyed, and I order you, come out, go away, in the name of Jesus, and you say, I believe it, Lord, amen. Now look at me. Check if your breathing is better now. 
But don't sit down, no. Let God operate. You're in such a hurry. I don't know why, you know. Can you imagine the doctor finishes the surgery? Doctor, I'm going home. <laughs> no, you have to wait. He might be stitching the wound up there. <laughs> and Dr. Suarez, Do Dr. Suarez, it's gone. The, the problem in my breathing is gone. Whose evil is gone? Raise your hand in the name of Jesus. Great, in the name of Christ. What was it with you, my brother? Short of breath, and I'm feeling better. I'm okay. okay now? Okay. Amen. And you, sister? I had two lumps here blocking my nostrils. I was breathing by my mouth, and now look. They are clear. Glory I'm to God. I'm breathing. Who else? And you, sister? My breathing, Pastor. It's Is better. Is it better now? Thank God. Okay, then. I'm calling Pastor Jaime here now because he'll continue with us. There are a lot of things he'll announce, the real-life drama. Whoever was healed now, raise your hand like this in the name of Jesus and say, thank you, Jesus. Let's give Jesus a wonderful round of applause. And let's now watch the real-life drama, shall we? Five years ago, I received the call to be a sponsor. Then I started to sponsor. Then I stopped sponsoring. When I stopped, about two years after that, I felt my life was really stuck. I sold snacks, I sold a lot of cakes, everything started to slow down. Nobody would buy them. Sometimes I'd go there and there was nobody around. We had a lot of bills and we couldn't afford to pay them. And we couldn't do anything about it. And then the debt problem started started to snowball. I couldn't fix my home. My home was falling down. The steels had stains on it, had holes, it was leaking. The bathroom was roughly finished. She actually never got to finish it. We joked around, my God, years go by and her home never changes. And then I thought to myself, no, I'll start to sponsor again. And then I started to sponsor again. And the doors opened. I started to sell very well at my snack shack. And it was because of the prosperity of my shack that I could afford to pay my bills and renovate my house, you know? I was just going to change the tiles. I wasn't going to renovate the house because I had some money, but it wasn't much. It wasn't only good for the roof. Okay, but then when the bricklayer took the tiles out, the house was going to fall over. And I said, what now, Jesus? Then I looked up and I thought to God and I said, it's in your hands. I went down to the, the, the store and I bought everything, the tiles, laths, rafters, and everything, everything new. And I said, it's in your hands, Jesus. I didn't have the tiles. I didn't have the ceiling. I had nothing. My house is all new from the roof to the floor. Everything now is new. And God has blessed me because I was able to pay for everything. Amen, Maria Nilsa. The Lord God has greatly blessed you, hasn't he? My house is very big. It is 1,400 square feet, eight built rooms. God has worked in her life. Her house looks good, the floor looks good, the finishing looks good. Only Jesus can do those things in our lives if we are faithful. We couldn't afford to finish it. And then after she started going to church, Things got better. Through the sponsoring, thank God, everything is fine. I cook meals for truck drivers. I have a snack shack. It's a place in between two gas stations, an excellent place. And this place was very slow in sales. But after I started sponsoring, I installed our TV services and I watched the service all day. Then everything is fine. I look at the yard, I don't see any truck. Then I go to the oven. I start to prepare the meal. I say, look, Jesus, I'll do the rice and beans, and it's in your hands. The customers you send me, when I least expect it, it's full of people waiting and the food's not enough. When there's a party, she sells at the party, and she always comes back very happy because she's been reaching her goals. Today, thank God, everything is on time. If we are faithful to the Lord, he supplies all of our needs. I'm faithful in sponsoring. As soon as I receive some money, I run to the bank to make my deposit. My son and I are sponsors. Today is like paradise. Compared to what it was before, now it's good. It got 100% better. It was God who helped us, I'm sure. And this is something else. I had stopped sponsoring, but now I don't want to stop again. I want to be faithful to sponsoring faithful to God. Isn't it beautiful, folks? God is tremendous. He's 
the one who does all that we ask and think. I got here just now, but it's beautiful to hear testimony. Earlier today, I also heard a beautiful testimony in the service that we ministered a few, a few days ago. But it was beautiful, beautiful. It was also a story of prosperity. How about we open our hearts now, please? Dr. Suarez, please help me. I don't have the courage to live anymore. Everything is dull for me. Nothing makes me happy. I don't have strength to fight anymore. I can't feel my body. It's as if I was already dead. I actually think about killing myself. Maybe I'll have peace then. What do you think? Never. No way, sister. But do you know what happens to people? The person simply doesn't know God truthfully, you know? Because the Bible says that in the presence of God there is what? Your presence is fullness and joy. Psalm 16, 16 verse 11. I mean, you have to live in the presence of God and have an encounter. I'm going to take my own life to find peace. One day there was, there was a guy. Uh, we were gathered in a certain place. And uh, a public, a public figure who's actually very famous, public famous, very famous. He got sick and he was in and out of the hospital until this guy ended up dying. And at that moment, at that time, there was a guy next to Dr. Suarez and he said, Dr. Suarez, at least now he's resting in peace. He said, I don't know, brother. He just might be struggling right now. Don't people say that, that when a person dies, they're resting? No, the Bible says that after death comes what? The judgment. So we shouldn't fool around with the, with the truth. So we should say say this, but not comfort their heart, obviously, you must speak with wisdom, but don't speak uh, uh, judging them, you know, because a person might have made a decision in the end. But by no means, the person who takes their own life will find peace, unless they have a mental problem or something. Disturbed, but this is not her case, you know, because she was saying before. Don't think, don't, don't ever think, but in the presence of God, there is life. He said, I have come to give you life, and life more abundantly. My advice to this lady is... And to everyone else is to get involved in the presence of God. Go to church, open your heart. Jesus, I want your strength in my life. Psalm 27 says, the Lord is my strength. She says she has no strength. The Lord will be your strength. In the presence of the Lord, Psalm 16 verse number 11 says that there is fullness of joy. You will enjoy this happiness. Not only you, but anyone who's thinking about taking their own life. Change your mind completely. Seek the Lord with all your heart. Tear your heart before Him. Jesus, I want your life in my life. I want life. And this life will come, okay? Shall we pray now, folks? Please stand up. First, I'll bless you here, and then we're going to enter into battle for the folks at home, and then I'll continue with you here. And God has something special. Close your eyes, please. Father, we pray and pray, Father. Dr. Suarez prayed for those who have any difficulties breathing. My God, if this person continues having any difficulties breathing, I bless them. Because Lord, one chases a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight.